Hey guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies coming at you with another 3D printing video. So this one is going to be a little bit different because I want to talk to you about this beautiful machine here. This is the Uniformation GK2. Um, this is probably the most expensive, most advanced uh, resin 3D printer that I have received. Um, usually when I get a, a 3D printer, it is in exchange for work. So for instance, someone will send me a 3D printer on the basis that I make a video for them. With this particular piece, I was asked to make four videos for them. So one is an actual full-on review video, and then three videos where I basically just mention it, that I use this machine um, to make this thing, and then used it in that video. Simple. Now, originally I was going to do the video where I show you guys all the specs and details of this machine, and then I was going to do the other three videos, like afterwards. But I figured it would make more sense if I did the other three first, which would give me an ample amount of time and experience using this machine to tell you in the final video basically my real thoughts and feelings towards this thing. So in today's video, I'm going to be adding a beautiful new Tyranid monster to my growing Tyranid collection for 10th edition. And um, yeah, it's basically a model from Station Forge they released a couple of weeks ago that I've had my eyes on. So I'm gonna be trying to print that out with this machine and get it painted up like in my scheme and now we're gonna see how it turns out. So I have no idea if it's gonna work, how this machine is gonna basically be used. Um, but I'm basically just gonna slap the files on in the print bed, hit print and see what happens. So wish me luck. Before I go into it, huge thank you to all of my active patrons out you guys. I would not be able to continue doing what I am doing, so thank you from the bottom of my heart. If you're interested in getting involved in that, there are links to that below in the description. You get access to a private Discord server and an extra video every single week just for you guys. So if that's something that interests you, check it out below. Okay, without further ado, let's print off the cool tier in it and get it painted. Okay, so this is my first experience. This is the first print that I ever put on this thing. Firstly, can I just say this design with the opening up lid thing is just far superior. My first 3D printer, the Anycubic Photon, had this six years ago. And now every other printer has this thing where you lift off the entire lid, which is an absolute pain. So thank you so much, Uniformation, for going through the process of giving us the lid. It's just so much handier, so much better. Print bed, as you can see, is quite fat. I'm not 100% sure as to why that is just yet. I'm sure I will know when I do the full print bed reveal, but yes, all the parts came off beautifully. And to say that I cannot see a single print line on these pieces is just a god on like nothing i can't see any lines it is perfect so obviously you get what you paid for this is obviously a little bit more expensive of a printer uh, and the results speak for itself i'm very happy with this so i'm going to wash off the parts now as per usual my wash station and then i'm going to remove all the parts from their uh, supports using just a little bit of boiling water and um, i always do this uh style i just dip the part in a, a cup of boiling water for two or three seconds if that and then the supports just fall away so that's what i'm going to do here got my big cup boiling water drop the model in and as you can see the the parts become super soft and the supports just fall away revealing a perfect piece no bits left behind no marks no damage no nothing just a beautiful wing So I'm going to do the same with the rest of the parts, get them all washed out, dried up, and then I'm going to go through the assembly process. I'm sure you guys have all seen the assembly process of miniatures before, so I'm going to speed that footage up just a little bit, just so I don't bore you to death. But suffice to say, this being the first print that I've ever used with this machine, and like I said, I did absolutely no tweaking, no, you know, setting it up, no leveling, none of that. Open the thing, poured resin in, hit print, that's all I did. And that allowed me to uh, build this beautiful model. So I got the model sprayed black and then sprayed gray sear. And then I go through the same stages that I always go through when it comes to painting my Tyranids. I am a huge fan of my own personal Tyranid scheme. Surprise, surprise. You like your own scheme. It's a funny one that a lot of people have taken up that cause. People keep sending me like, uh, like tagging me on Instagram and stuff when they follow my tutorial and they have joined my hive fleet. And I think that's really fun. It's a really, a lot of fun. I love it. Uh, it's such a simple and easy color scheme to do. And I think it gives you quite nice results. It's quite a, uh, a nice looking uh, Tyranid scheme. So it starts with glue and flesh all over all the soft parts of it, trying to avoid the carapace. Not trying to avoid it for any particular reason. We're going to be painting over the carapace anyway, but yeah, you don't need to paint the carapace. Don't worry about that. 
is obviously uh, nice. The, the, I think one of my favorite things about the Tyranid scheme that I've chosen is the fact that it is so fast, which I think is definitely something that is super important when it comes to a Tyranid painting scheme. You are going to have so many miniatures to paint for an army. Even if it's a thousand point army, you're going to have at least 100 miniatures on the table. So having a scheme that you can kind of blast through and get it done really fast, I think is definitely the way to go. The scheme is definitely, uh, definitely good for that. So after I've gone through the process of getting the gulam and flesh across all the soft things, I want to make it look just a little bit more, I don't know, alien, a little bit more raw, a little bit more, you know, this thing was spawned yesterday. It's not an old ancient creature and I kind of want that new kind of sore skin look. So what I tend to do is I then hit the whole thing with a coat of carrion brick crimson. So all of the skin gets a coat of that. This is a nice kind of ready scheme doesn't take much once again it's another quick stage to do but as you can see it just changes the from that really cold pallid looking skin to something with a lot of life flowing through it and like i said it adds that kind of alien pallor to it i think a little bit more so i'm a big fan of this after that we're just going to do two dry brushes across the the skin and after that we can then start working on the carapace so obviously this is not a traditional tyranid miniature this is a 3d printed um, piece it is from station forge they released it a couple of weeks ago yeah, i'm a huge fan and supporter of station forge and um, i've never done a sponsored video for them they have never you know given me anything for free or anything like that i just absolutely love what they do uh, their designs are just absolutely amazing they do a whole range of what they call grimguard which are stand-ins for death corps of krieg like for instance this week they've actually added in a new bane blade variant for them which is unbelievable they've added in a huge tyranid range and i think that's really cool like i said i'm going into my second season of my battle reports now next month uh, and the tyranids are going to play obviously quite a pivotal role as they're quite important in the 40k universe and the idea of having cool models like this where i can maybe make up my own rules for it have it be this bespoke character um something i can tell a little bit more of a story uh, about you know i think is really sweet and really helpful so i'm really glad to have the opportunity to have those kind of files print them off and get them on the tabletop and matching in with my army quite nicely i mean there's a lot of people out there doing secondhand um designs for armies and i think a lot of the time they fall quite short of the mark i mean if you do that entire bundle together then they're gonna look fine but if you have something that can make a beautiful tyranid sculpt and it can match in with already existing plastics and look like it belongs I think that's something just a little bit more special um, and i definitely think it's a step up so i think that this model here definitely falls into that i have no idea what i'm going to use it for as it stands it's currently called a flying prime or a flying leader beast i think is what they named it i thought it was going to be the size of a flying hive tire and i thought that's what it was is designed to stand in for but it's a little bit smaller than that it's too big to be the parasite mortex it's it's a bizarre kind of size um, so I'm sure I can, if you guys have any ideas as to what I should use it as, or any rule suggestions, please let me know. Um, I'd be more than happy to take your suggestions uh, on board for how to field this thing. But yeah, I'm just, like I said, I'm just throwing those dry brushes out now, just to brighten up that skin, add a little bit more texture and a little bit more life to it. And as you can see, there's a lot of depth to the skin. I think that's a super important thing, is give lots of depth, depth to something that is like alive, so tearing it. And that's why I tend to do lots of layers. After that, we're going to go to Stegadon Scale Green, which is actually my favorite stage, maybe a second favorite stage, of painting my Tyranid scheme. Because obviously, with doing the all the skin, it's quite messy, it's quite sloppy, it doesn't give you a clear indication of what the model is going to look like at the end. But the Stegadon Scale Green, where I block in all of the carapace and all the chitin across the rest of the model, I think is super cool. And by the end of this stage, you can basically see what the model is going to look like. It's all broken apart and it looks great. At least I think it looks great, but uh, I guess you can be the judge of that later on. It's also quite a relaxing stage. It's just a thin down, stick it on scale green, not like super thin down. And then going across, paying the carapace. And I don't know what it is, but this stage has always been quite therapeutic for me. Always, when You can also stop uh, doing it halfway through. You can do like the legs, take a step back and look at how that's going. And definitely once again, see how the model is progressing. And how it's going to look in the end the station forge people have also released the stand-in for a bio titan a couple of weeks ago so this is a monstrous 3d print and it is something that i have considered 3d printing and obviously now that i have access to two larger printers like the one that i have used to print this guy out means that printing those kind of things is no longer a thing of the past i have the facilities and the opportunity to now go ahead and do those and uh, is that something you guys would like to see Obviously, the new uh, Grimguard Baneblade and the Tyranid 
um, Super Heavy, uh, Bio Titan are two big things that I would love to see on the tabletop. And once again, play a vital role in battle reports or campaigns and stuff like that. I think that would be super cool. So let me know in the comments if that's something you guys would like to see. Like I said, I need to make three more videos for this machine. So perhaps printing off some sort of large scale thing would be a good indication of how it's working out for me. Okay, as you can see, once the Stegodon scale green is all blocked in, it changes the feel of the whole model. It definitely starts to feel like my Tyranid paint scheme. I have a whole lore built around my Tyranid paint scheme. I think it's super cool. And it's something I have shared with a few people on Twitch and some previous videos. But I do intend to make a full video on my Tyranid scheme, why it's called what it's called, and um, its attributes and stuff like that. Altioch blue is then used to feather in the carapace, just adding a little bit of a brighter blue, but not going all the way into the recesses. And the feathering technique just means that I'm using the pointed part of the brush loaded with paint and then pulling it down sharply to create kind of like a, a spiky kind of fretted line of paint uh, across the carapace. Which once again adds that, that aspect of like um, texture. You don't want the carapace to be the solid block of color. That's a very natural thing. Like, you know, if you spray a tank of color, it's going to be the solid block. Something that is alive, a beast, shouldn't be like that. At least I don't think it should be like that. So I go through and add that stage to the blue. And then the, probably my actual favorite stage is the Dumble Brown stage. So what I do is I mix Dumble Brown with a lot of water so it's really thin. And then I basically pin wash it in between all of the carapace parts of the model. And it just, once again, adds that really alien feel to the whole piece. It's so cool. Yeah, I cannot take credit for it ever. Uh, a good friend of mine, The Golden Shin, if you don't know who he is, check him out on Instagram. The Golden Shin, he's a, like, the best painter that I know. Um, yeah, I originally brought in my Tierna paint scheme many years ago and was like, it's blue and it's skin. I think it looks okay, but it's missing something. And he, without dropping a beat, he was just like, water down, dual brown, paint in the recess. And I was like, oh, this sounds weird, but... Uh, I listened to advice. I did it. Super happy with the result. Can never stop thanking him for it. And now there's seven, eight thousand points of painted Tyranids in this game because of him. So, adding Volopus Pink now. Now, Volopus Pink has only started being introduced into my Tyranid scheme since the new 10th edition Tyranids have been released. I didn't do it to any of the previous ones. I regret it. I will go back and add it to them. But I basically do it on all the soft seal parts of the miniature. So, uh, in between the joints of armor. I've done the wing membranes, uh, the kind of cape thing that he has uh, in between elbow joints and knee joints and stuff like that. I'm going to add it in too. Uh, and that basically gives me this, this really nice kind of pop of color. And that basically finishes off the scheme. Obviously, I did some rattling ground for the teeth. I painted the eyes red, you know, nothing crazy. I painted the eyes yellow, sorry. And um, dry brushed the base up with some grays, uh, rimmed the base black, and then add some texture snow on top of that to match him in with the rest of my Tyrion and Force. And that's going to be basically all I'm going to do to this beautiful model that will finish him off for me. And I have now got another big awesome Tyranid Beastie added to my collection. Thanks to the GK2 3D printer and Station Forge, I'm able to do cool things like this. So, yeah. I'd love to know your thoughts on 3D printing uh, Tyranids. Do you know of any other cool files out there that I can use that you'd think look particularly good? And once again, what I may be able to use this beast as, Flying Hive Tyrant is still very much up there as an option. I think he looks great. I think he turned out fantastic. I've got a couple of images. He's an awkward model to photograph. I didn't actually particularly like the photographs I took with him because he's so angular and he's tall and his neck is long. It's no matter what angle you kind of put the photo to, you can't really get the full aspect of what he looks like, which is a little bit disappointing, unfortunately, but I still think he's an awesome beastie. And I hope you guys definitely enjoyed this video. Well, it works. <laughs> um, yes, so I have managed to throw the files onto the print bed, hit print, and uh, I got a beautiful model. So to honestly tell you my first thoughts on the machine, uh, not a full review, just my first thoughts, it is one of the easiest machines I have ever used to get started with. I literally unboxed it, poured resin into the vat, put a file on the hit print. It is already pre-leveled from the factory you don't have to do any messing about with that um the prints came out beautifully i'm always worried with prints like this with like tall wings and that it's a lot of time being with the potential of them being pulled off the print bed and stuff uh, and i have absolutely no problems whatsoever so first time using it big thumbs up obviously i will show you this machine three more times so hopefully by the end of it you'll have a, a better understanding as to whether it's not something that interests you if it is something that interests you already i will leave links in the description below so you can check it out for yourself but so far so good 
So thank you guys so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it and you learned something. Uh, if you're interested in uh, supporting the channel, make sure that you like the video, subscribe, drop comments, and once again, have a look at that Patreon. Thank you so much for sticking around at the end of the video. I'll see you in the next one.